What is the church? Or maybe we should ask the question, who are the church? Acts chapter 2 and verse 47 reveals to us that the church is people. It is composed of those people who have been called out, those who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ and have thereby been sanctified, Ephesians 5, verses 25 through 27. So since the church is people, its strength as a local force for good is dependent upon the people who make up the church. In other words, the local church can only be as strong as the members that are in it. This does not argue, nor do I believe, that the church is only as strong as its weakest member, but it does argue that the local church derives its strength from the dedication and the fidelity of its individual members. We should be very grateful for those who are strong in the Lord's church, and thankfully at Pyburn Street we have many. They give stability to our fellowship. They give courage to our weaker members. They hold up the distressed and comfort the disheartened. And strong members give more. They give more time to the cause. They give more effort to winning souls for Christ. And they will likely give more financial support to the work of the church. It is an apparent fact that the strong among us help us to become stronger. The weaker member, the member who is indifferent, uninvolved, disinterested, apathetic, weakens the local church. That member shows a lack of interest in spiritual things of the church and that results in the world getting a poor estimate of the cause that he claims to profess. He often manifests a kind of half-hearted devotion to his duties thus causing those in the center of his influence to see little or no conviction or determination to adhere to the truth in this person's life. Their manner of life does not show to others their determination to conform to their profession of faith, and members such as this weaken the local church. Those who are irregular in their attendance have a weakening effect upon the church. Attendance is a manifestation of interest, no matter what the project or the endeavor may be. In fact, such a purpose is stated in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24, when the writer enjoins to consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, with not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Such assemblies were obviously meant to cause us to be regularly reinforced for our encounters with the world as well as our personal spiritual progress. But when people do not attend as they ought, the opposite impression is forthcoming. We become discouraged. Nothing encourages a local congregation of God's people more than having everyone present for the services and few are the things that are more discouraging than the sight of unoccupied pews. If you do not attend regularly and you have an opportunity, please be advised that you are possibly being a discouragement to those who do. Uninformed members have a weakening effect upon the local church as well. Those who are not willing to put forth the effort to grow in spiritual knowledge are more likely to make mistakes in judgment as they go about their day-to-day -day lives. This person is one who will not give diligence to find out what life is about and how to live it, and this person cannot, in the very nature of this case, rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15, or a, a portion out of it, what is his daily living? That person's tendency is to compromise, and, and it will be compounded by his not having truth in such a close proximity that he can apply it accurately to some given set of circumstances, and as a result, he can easily bring disrespect upon the church. Friends, every member of the church is important. Christ died for every person, and he is interested in every person being saved. In fact, the final consideration is not in the local fellowship as an organized entity, but the individual members which comprise it. We're told that every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess, and each one shall give an account of himself. We're told these things in the Word of God. The recognition of such should cause every person to put forth greater effort to be saved, but we need also to realize that we have an influence upon others, and that influence will be a part of the assignment for which we will be held accountable on the Day of Judgment. 
Therefore, let us resolve to be strong. Let us redouble our efforts to be faithful to our commitments to the Lord, thereby becoming an even greater influence for good, both inside and outside of the church. Thank you for joining us today, and may God bless you with a wonderful day.